All right, we are in counter operations again. After a short review, we'll see how a count up down counter works. Then, we'll do a simple project to see how counters can help us in an industrial process. These are ladder symbol of two counters. Count up counter with the syntax and count down counter. We've seen how these counters work in previous video. By default, format of their numbers are integer. Let me open TIA software. For a counter, here, I can change its number format. The main differences between these formats, are their range and also number of bit memory which they use. Let me open help window. Here, search integer. Click here. On the right side, we can see integer formats. For example click on this format. As you see, an integer number needs 16 bits, and supports minus 327068, to 327067. Or select double integer. This format needs 32 bits which is equal 4 bytes. Also its range is bigger than integer format. We can see its structure in the bottom. For double integer format. The signal states of bits 0 to 30 represent the number value. The signal state of bit 31 represents the sign. The sign may assume 0 for the positive, or 1 for the negative signal state. Alright, when we combine these counters, we'll get the count up and down counter. As you see, this counter has all inputs outputs of upper counters. Let's see how this simple ladder program works. For each pulse at the first input, CU, the counter value will be increased. For example it start from 0 to 3. At this moment, like count up counter, because the current value is equal the preset value, the first output, QU, will be on. After that, if we have three positive pulses at the second input, CD, then the current value decreased to 2, 1, and finally 0. Here, like countdown counter, the second output, QD, will be on. The reset terminal can change CV to 0, and the load terminal is used to copy preset value on the current value. So this counter has three outputs. The first output will be on, if CV is equal or greater than preset value. Otherwise it will be off. The second output, QD, will be on, if CV is equal or less than zero. And also we can use CV output to store current value. Now pause this video and try to work with this counter in TIA software, like previous counters. Then let me define a project with factory IO. The project is load and unload three boxes onto a buffer conveyor. Here, we have two conveyors which are called entry and buffer conveyor. Also here we have three sensors, and two push buttons to start and stop. When a box is placed on the first conveyor, it's moved to buffer conveyor. Here, with these sensors, 
we can count boxes. Pay attention, when there isn't any boxes, these sensors send a positive signal to PLC, until a box is placed in front of them and cut this path. After three boxes, the buffer conveyor move them. First, let me test the final project and then show you how we can do that. Let's see what happened if I press start push button. Now I press stop push button. This line will be stopped, when buffer conveyor has moved all boxes. Alright. Now I'm going to show you, how I have designed this plant in the factory I.O. Here, select fourth project, queue of items. Then just insert a control box with start and stop push buttons. Now, let me define my PLC inputs outputs tag. Here we have start and stop push buttons, and three sensors which are connected to PLC inputs, and also two conveyors which are controlled by PLC outputs. Now, let's start programming. First pause this video and try to do this project by yourself. Use counter operands to write a simple program, test it and if there is any bug in your program try to modify that. Then, if you want, compare your program with mine. I first store the start stop request in a bit memory of PLC, like previous projects.
In the third network, I want to write a program to count number of boxes, which are on the buffer conveyor. First let me to explain my program. At the third network, I've used a count up and down counter. The CU and CD inputs are connected to sensors, which are installed at the first and end of the buffer conveyor. Here, I have used a bit logic operand to detect positive signal edge at the first input. See here. When a box is behind the sensor, it send PLC1. When the box is passing through the sensor, its signal change to zero. If the box pass completely, we'll have a positive signal edge. Which make the counter value increase to 1. With the next boxes, the current value will be 2 and then 3, which is equal the preset value. At this time, first output of counter, QU, will be on. As the same way, second sensor make decrease counter value to 0. At this time the QD output will be on. Also I have used the start push button, to reset this counter at the starting time. It's expected you can write this program. Let's see my program in the next network. Here I have used a SR flip flop to turn on off first conveyor. It will be on if the start push button is pressed, or, there is not any boxes on the buffer conveyor. Pay attention, I don't want to turn this conveyor, when there the start stop memory is off. It will be off, if the stop push button is pressed, or, we have three boxes on the buffer conveyor. All instructions at this network, are bit logic operands, which you have learned before, just pay attention here, how can we refer to output QU, of my counter. As you know, when this output is on, it means the current value is equal or greater than preset value. So it means there are three boxes on the buffer conveyor. So let's come back to TIA software. Here, you just need to write your counter name, and then select its input or output. Alright, let's see my last network program to turn on off buffer conveyor. This network is similar to network 4. The buffer conveyor will be on, if there are three boxes on this conveyor, and it will be off, if it doesn't have three boxes. Also, if the first sensor detects a box, the conveyor must be on, until this box completely place on the buffer conveyor. Well, what is this contact? Pay attention, we don't turn of this conveyor for third box. Because all three boxes must be moved. Alright, this was my program, which has been tested before. In the next video, we'll start to learn comparator operations. Thanks.